Hello and welcome to Merck's webinar titled Seven Tips for Successful Six Sigma Implementation. The focus for today is Six Sigma deployment, an area that I am really passionate about. My name is Fawzi Bawab and I'm excited to share with you today takeaways from my years of experience working as a consultant with various clients in the region where I continue to deliver several training sessions and coach green and black belts through their projects. Over the next 30 minutes, I open the floor for your questions. Now, what, what I may suggest, if you have any question, just park it in the chat room, and we can, of course, uh, get that question answered by end of the session. Uh, what we will do, we will capture your input and try to answer all of them at the end. So if you allow me, let's get started. I'm a partner with Merck Training and Consulting. My history, my degrees are in civil engineering and industrial engineering management. I've been working with a number of companies before joining Merck Training and Consulting. I used to live and work in Ottawa, the Canadian capital, where I used to work with KPMG Quality Registrar Services and also with British Standard Institution, BSI. Before that, I used to work with IBM as their quality manager. And before that, I used to work with a company called Talal Abu Ghazala Consulting Services. Over the last 22 years, I've been involved in many projects, many training, including leadership training, strategic planning, KPIs, balanced scorecards, and of course, the quality field. Six Sigma, Lean, ISO are some of the things that I continue to do in the region under training and consulting assignments. I work with a, you know, lots of clients in different industries, different areas, from General Motors to Kraft Canada, to STC, Emirates Bank, Otis, Almarai, Sabic, and many other clients, including you know, consulting and training assignments. All right, before we start, let me share with you the agenda for today. First of all, we will start talking about the need for Six Sigma. I know many, of, many people will be starting to ask, why should we implement Six Sigma today? So we'll talk about that, and we'll talk about the three dimensions of Six Sigma. We will talk about the main three dimensions that usually are driving the Six Sigma deployment in organization. Why Six Sigma? Why should we pick Six Sigma as a methodology for improvement? Is your organization ready for Six Sigma? Another question that many of you might be wondering, if you're ready to start the deployment of Six Sigma, we will share with you some survey results that Merck conducted recently on the success of Six Sigma deployment and what are the barriers that many are facing today. At the end, we will share with you the very important seven tips for Six Sigma successful implementation in organization. Okay, allow me to make a confession. I have been a demon buster working, trying to catch demons over the last 25 years. Now, I'm sure you are wondering who are these demons and what do they represent? If you allow me, I can share with you the first demon. The first demon is known as the delay demon. And of course, many of you have faced this demon. What is taking you so long to get my order? A question that we often like to ask at everywhere. Restaurants, airport, anywhere you go to, you're looking for that demon. The second demon is the deviation demon. This is not the service I received last time. What is wrong with your process? The third demon is about defects. You gave me the wrong prescription. You sent me the wrong order. It's about errors, mistakes, 
that continue to haunt us all the time. These demons keep executives up at night. These demons create a dent in our balance sheets and we continue to chase them every day and we have developed certain methodologies. In my case, I have two guns that I continuously use to haunt and neutralize these demons. Now, the two guns that I've learned that they are most effective in fighting these two demons are the two guns of Six Sigma and Lean. Now, we will be focusing on Six Sigma in this session. Of course, Lean is another methodology that proved to be very successful for Toyota, and many organizations are implementing it right now in every type of industry. Just a little bit on the Six Sigma history. Uh, Six Sigma started in the production areas. Motorola, early 1980s, started to implement it in its production industry. And later on, the methodology started to get wide acceptance. GE, ABB, Allied Signal started to implement this methodology successfully at their operations. The implementation spread to non-production and non production non industry sections for example hr it hospitals started to implement six sigma after the success in the production and manufacturing areas i call for what we refer to the three dimensions that make Six Sigma, a successful deployment. The three dimensions depend on the following factors. Organizational structure. The existence, the presence of an organizational structure that is led by senior management, driven by the voice of the customer, and enabled by a competent quality team are the areas that will support the deployment of Six Sigma. The second dimension is the unique methodology that relies on the structure of what we call or we refer to as the DMIC. Define, measure, analyze, improve, and control. The project that need to be following a DMIC structure makes it a very unique structure. The third dimension is about the tools, whether you're using quantitative or qualitative tools, whether you're using a Pareto or you're using a flowchart or a description of the process through a SIPOC or a regression analysis or an analysis of variance or a design of experiments, all these tools are available for us to make a success during the implementation of a Six Sigma project. These are the three dimensions that we continuously use and enable in our Six Sigma implementation. Why should we use Six Sigma? I'm sure you're familiar now with the demons, the defects, the reduction, and the removal of non-value added activities. They stay at the top priority of every organization's strategic objectives. Reducing cost, becoming more efficient in what we do is another area. If you align the strategic objectives of any organization to Six Sigma objectives, you'll see that we have a 100% match. This will lead eventually to customer referrals, customer satisfaction, and customer retention. This is what every organization seek today. The approach is simple. However, we need to look for translation of a practical problem in our project to a statistical problem. And this is where the competence, the training of our green belts and black belts will become very handy. The statistical problem is massaged, is looked at, and the data is used to create a statistical solution. That statistical solution is then 
copied and translated into a practical solution. Eventually, what we will get, we will get a practical solution that is driven on data. It is essentially a data-driven methodology to achieve results. The methodology depends on defining the problem, understanding the scope, understanding the voice of the customer, mapping the current process and collecting the appropriate data that is under the measurement. Once we finish that, we go into the analyze stage. The analyze is our root cause analysis to discover what is the true root cause of the variation of the process. It doesn't matter. This could be a process for omelet preparation. This could be a process for a registration at a hospital. This could be a process for admission at a hotel. It doesn't matter. A process is, is a process. We move to the improve section where we implement, we test, and we verify the solution. Once we're confident that the solution has made an impact, we move to the control where we maintain the solution, where we sustain the results, and we work on a plan to ensure that the results are measurable, quantifiable, and we have a measurement on what we call the cost of poor quality, i.e. the dollars benefit out of this project. Are you ready for Six Sigma deployment? Is your organization ready for Six Sigma? First of all, we look for, is, is change a critical business need right now? Are you looking to change how you operate your processes? Do you have competition coming in? Do you have technological needs? If you say yes, we can go to the next question. Can you come up with a strong strategic rationale for applying Six Sigma to your business? Can you align the strategic objectives of the organization with Six Sigma deployment? Will your existing improvement systems and methods be capable of achieving the degree of change that you need right now? If you answered yes, yes and no, your organization is generally considered ready to explore Six Sigma. We always look at the maturity of an organization depending on their current quality systems. We try to ensure that the maturity level is there before we embark on any Six Sigma deployment. If you allow me, we at Merck continue to conduct many surveys. We try to get feedback from our customers, from our clients, on the effectiveness of the deployment of Six Sigma. And I'd like to share some results, but before we get there, I'd like to get your feedback. So we're going to do a survey with you. And I know that some of your companies have been implementing Six Sigma. Some of you are thinking about Six Sigma. So if you allow me, let me open the first survey. And all you have to do is pick your choice. And then we can share some of the results that you present to us versus the one that we've collected in the uh, market. All right. So if you can see this, I'll give you probably 20 seconds and you just have to see whether Six Sigma is adding or do you think it will add value to your organization based on your knowledge. Okay, I think uh, votes are coming in. Okay, so let me uh, end the voting, share some results with you. Okay, so let me share with you results and how they appear, and let's compare them with our. As you notice, do you believe that Six Sigma or Lean would add value or added value to your organization? We see 61% saying yes. 
Now, I noticed that there's a 7% of I don't know, probably because you haven't implemented Six Sigma, you haven't seen results before, but the results here are sort of matching the results that we got from our current survey. So if you allow me, let me share with you the results. Go back. And here is what we got from a larger sample where we did the survey with uh, of our clients and we sent the same question. 90% uh, said yes. I mean, that's, that's an amazing response just showing you from practical side that Six Sigma lean adds value to an organization. All right, so if you allow me, when you consider any project under Six Sigma, remember Six Sigma depends on a project selection. What is important for us to make sure that the factors that we select, the project that we select will achieve positive results. So if you allow me here, let me use my fancy pen here. First of all, we're talking about projects that are linked to company strategy. It is critical to align the projects of Six Sigma, the, the goals, the objectives with what the company is trying to achieve. That will create a successful project. The second one, projects have a well-defined and narrow scope. If you're trying to boil the ocean, well, good luck. That will not happen. When we select projects, we try to select projects that make sense, that are narrow in scope, and we have a good understanding of what we're trying to achieve. Projects have significant impact on organization. This is another area where we make sure that a project is connected directly to the bottom line of an organization, i.e. financial results. Do you have the proper leadership support? Well, this is critical. Uh, without the proper leadership support, projects will not have a chance to succeed. The last one is about do you have data? Do you have metrics available for us to do our projects? If you recall, we did mention that Six Sigma depends on a data-driven methodology, i.e. we require data, we require metrics. And hence, this is one of the areas that we consider as an important factor for achieving positive results. Show me the money. Not sure if you've seen the movie or not, but this is what management keeps telling me. Show me the dollars. Well, Six Sigma does that. And in a recent survey, we got more than 80% of organization telling us that, yes, the money was there, the savings was there. And they were able to reduce their operating costs and reduce what we call the waste. How much did they save? Based on the survey we conducted, we're looking at more than 60% of the feedback that we got reporting that they have saved more than $100,000 on these projects. So you're talking about averages, of course, but you're saying that these projects on average saved more than $100,000. Great response. How long does it take? to do a project in Six Sigma? Well, we can talk about three, four, six, eight. Usually we'd say more than or around 60% of the project that I see can get results within a three to six month. Nothing too difficult. If you scope it well, you can get results within maybe three, four, five month time. And usually that's the average time for a Six Sigma project. The implementation rollout, of course, starts with what we refer to as the executive's briefings. This is very critical to gain the momentum, to get leadership on board. Once we get that in, we 
try to build the structure, the infrastructure through which the deployment will happen. Do you need a champion? Do you need a sponsor? Do you need to educate people at different levels to get that structure in place? This is what we're talking about here. We need to have an understanding of our baseline. Where do we stand today? This is very critical to the success of a Six Sigma project as we start to compare the before to the after. After we do that, the training starts and the deliverable of a training, of course, will be projects. As we said, that could happen within a six month, five month, four month period, but results will need to be shown after that training and the financial benefits will have to be justified at the end of the project. Barriers, obstacles that face people during the implementation. And I'd like to maybe run another question for you. Uh, some of you have been implementing quality, could be ISO, could be uh, Plan Do Check Act, could be Lean, could be Six Sigma, can relate to these barriers. So I'd like to get to the question here and let me take you here. So what are, in your opinion, the top three obstacles faced during the implementation? So I'd like to open that for you here. And let's see the results, give you some time to do that. All right, I see the results coming in. All right, you see the results, and then we'll compare them with our own results with a larger sample. Yeah, I see one of them picking up. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Still going. All right. So let me end the voting. All right. Still votes are coming in. <laughs> And okay, let me end the voting and share with you the results. Here we go. As expected, the number one was 35% coming under the lack of leadership support. And I cannot emphasize the importance of leadership support. Top management commitment is one of the very important factors for a Six Sigma project to succeed. We have also, or we see another area, which is also 14, 14%, lack of staff awareness. Uh, people will start to wonder, what is the Six Sigma? Uh, have you provided enough training for your staff to be on board? Do you have the buy-in? The famous question of what's in it for me? Why should I be part of the team to implement Six Sigma? Is another top question that can create a barrier for the implementation. Another area is developing the competence and the expertise and the knowledge of the tools that can become a barrier for Six Sigma implementation. Thank you very much for your votes. Let me take you back to the original survey that we did on a larger sample and see how do we compare. Here we go. Again, I think your answers sort of match what the larger sample told us. And if you compare here, you'll see that the lack of staff awareness, lack of team expertise, and lack of leadership were the top three that came in your obstacles and in your answers. So well done. Seems we are all aligned. And these are the ones that we should be looking at during the implementation of a Six Sigma project. OK, a uh, little bit of 
you know, Merck, we work with many clients on training, on consulting, and I want to share with you actual projects that Merck was able to complete with their clients and get results. So the first one is about healthcare hospital in the UAE, United Arab Emirates, that succeeded to reduce the ER waiting time by more than 30% and to realize financial benefits of over 17 million dirhams as yearly income. An oil and gas company in Saudi Arabia reduced current response time by a factor of 33% in one of its IT applications, reaching a Six Sigma level for that process. In a major UAE airport, the purchase requisition process cycle time was reduced by more than 20%. We're talking about cycle time for uh, a procurement process. In an international pharmaceutical company, the inbound shipment to Dubai cycle time was reduced from seven weeks to four weeks. Amazing results, great financial results as well. So, what are the seven tips for successful implementation of a Six Sigma project? As you have probably guessed, is secure management commitment and visible support through the stages of the deployment. Leadership support is a must. The second one, spend some time, selection, and the prioritization of projects. We usually use some kind of a criteria in our initial screening. We have a decision matrix to help us select the projects that will stand a good chance to be a successful project later on. Do you have a strategy? Do you have a plan to deploy and introduce Six Sigma in an organization? This is not an accident. You don't introduce Six Sigma by an accident activity. It is a well-planned strategy has to be supported by top management and you need to have the right backup for that plan. Do you have resources to support the deployment? Projects, members, venues, tools, machines, softwares are needed during the implementation and hence financial resources will be needed. Customer orientation. The projects need to be following the voice of the customer. Every project in Six Sigma needs to have a linkage to a customer need or it is customer oriented. Data, metrics, measurements are critical to the success of a Six Sigma project. Do you have the metrics? Do you have the data? And are you confident that you have the right data? Things that we sort of suggest to people to when they start their projects in Six Sigma. And the final one is about follow-up, communication, and success stories to be spread. Remember, we want to make Six Sigma the culture of an organization. And we can only do that by spreading the word. After the completion of a project, we do expect that people will come back, follow up on the results, and communicate the projects as a success story to spread the success within the complete organization. So what did we cover? Well, we just did a Six Sigma overview, prepared us for the main course. That was our appetizer today. Of course, the main course will be a more structured understanding through formal training, where people can spend five days, 10 days, three days on formal training. And of course, the dessert will be the real projects and implementation where you get the value of all that training and the projects into financial, into real uh, results. So, takeaways. Demons do exist. And you've met the three demons that we face all the time. Lean. Six Sigma is a great methodology to fight the demons. Does it work? Yes, it does work. We continue to see actual 
results. It's not about statistics, it's about problem solving and common sense. To succeed, you need to start with top management. And yes, it pays in any, in any currency, and you can take that to the bank. Thank you very much for listening in. I think it's time now to start taking your uh, questions. So please park your questions. And I see a question here from uh, Nassim. Thank you, Nassim. And I see a question saying, in the hospital projects, did you quantify the uh, clinical impact? Uh, as I mentioned to you, this project was focusing on a specific process, which was the emergency room waiting time. And this is one of the biggest areas that hospitals are trying to optimize. Uh, the clinical impact, uh, we did not get into that in terms of measurements. We were focusing on the cycle time and, the, of course, the financial benefits on how they can actually get patients Move, moved within an ER and reduce the waiting time uh, where customers, where patients are usually complaining about the lengthy waiting time. I hope I answered your question there. All right, more questions? Any more questions? I am ready. Rami. Okay. Construction field, how this can help. Okay. Uh, when construction, it, it can help in any field. Uh, the most important part is to try to define the process that's giving you pain. Uh, so in the construction field, you've got the actual operation that you can uh, run any project. You can think about cycle time to set up a project. Uh, you can talk about uh, defects or errors are happening of a certain uh, process in your construction phase. You can talk about internal processes, i.e. admin, uh, you know, maybe tendering approval process, maybe um, contractual uh, agreements, getting these things ready. So you can talk about admin, you can talk about IT, you can talk about HR, or you can take it to the construction where it's more process core process related. But then again, the question is, where is the pain? What's causing you the pain right now? What is your customer telling you today? Do you need to improve cycle time, preparation time, defect level? You know, think of the three demons that we talked about. Thank you, Rami. Hope you answered the question. I see some names there. I know that some of them are already implementing uh, Lean Six Sigma. OK, uh, Amber, uh, please advise how and where to apply Six Sigma in telecom operators. All right, good question. So you're talking about uh, companies that deliver, uh, what do we call it, uh, communication, telecommunication, maybe like STC in Saudi, like uh, Zane or uh, 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 it is a lot or do all right uh, well one of the if you want to talk about core processes it could be about the technical issues they have for example the uh, drop down calls percentage which is network efficiency so that could be translated into a six sigma project uh, you can talk about their uh, hr if you want to go to hr recruitment cycle or recruitment errors or defects that are happening in the selection and interviewing process. You can talk about uh, reducing the cycle time to launch a new product in marketing. So you can talk about how you can optimize the steps and services uh, as well. So services versus core business, you can apply it in any type of business as long as you have a good understanding of the process that has a pain. I hope I answered your question, Amber.
Thank you. So, you know, we, we offer lots of these type of training services in our Merck uh, offerings under the quality. And, you know, we offer now the, what we call the two types of uh, levels of training, the yellow belt, and we have the green belt, which is uh, sort of an approved program by the American Society for Quality. So people who attend these programs will gain more understanding of the exact methodology and, of course, how they can go about identifying each of these steps and identifying a project. All right. Uh, if you have any questions, please uh, share. Uh, this webinar will be, it is recorded and will be shared with you uh, later on through a link so you can download it and you can share it with anyone you want. Okay, any other questions I'll be more than glad to answer. Okay, well I guess it's uh, the Thursday afternoon syndrome. So I guess everyone is ready to go and... Oh, here's Muhammad. Muhammad, any questions? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. No more questions. Okay. I'd like to thank you. Okay, Muhammad. <laughs> One more question. Yes. Okay, very good question. So you're saying when you want to label a project, a successful project in Six Sigma, does it need to reach the Six Sigma level? Uh, as you, some of you may know that Sigma is a metric that indicates goodness how well a process is meeting its objectives or targets and the deviation associated with that uh, target. So when you say that a project is running, a Six Sigma project is running, you don't need to reach the Six Sigma level. If you can improve, if you can show improvement between 2.3 Sigma to 4.8, you have completed a Six Sigma project. So i.e. what I'm saying here that you do not need to reach the Six Sigma level to be labeled a successful Six Sigma project because sometimes you don't need to. It depends on the customer needs. It depends on the investment you're willing to put in that uh, process. So in other words, if you show improvement and you can compare before and after in your Sigma metric, you have achieved success. I hope I have answered your question, Hamad. Okay, great, thanks. Um, okay, if there are no other more questions, uh, let me stop and say thank you very much for attending this webinar. I hope uh, we will have uh, more webinars on different topics under the quality. Meanwhile, feel free to check our website on additional programs and uh, good luck to everyone. Thank you very much and have a great afternoon and a weekend if you are in the Middle East region. Thank you. Merck.com